Hello, book lovers. Tonight, I am sharing reviews of some picture books that I absolutely love and want to recommend. So I have to say that all of these books were sent to me by Candlewick Press, which I, I have been recommending Candlewick books for years and years. I think one of the earliest posts on the website is a recommendation of a bunch of, of Candlewick books. So I love Candlewick and um, they have sent me these in exchange for an honest review. So I've got a bunch. Tonight is the first. I'm going to do reviews of picture books tonight, tomorrow and Wednesday night. Then Thursday night, I'm live streaming a differentiation question and answer like my office hours. And then Friday at noon, I'll be doing um, chapter books, one nonfiction picture book. And if you're a teacher or a homeschooling parent, I invite you to join in there and put your kids' comments in the chat. I'd love to have a little book talk with kids on Friday. So the first book I am sharing with you tonight is one called Paper World Space. And it is an incredible book. It, you, I don't know if you can see if it gives it the dimensionality um, through the screen, but you actually like can stick your hand right through the cover. When you open it up, and, and then again, it's just all these layers. It has this interesting kind of vintage feel, almost like a 50s design vibe, like if a book were designed mid-century modern. So the design is really cool. But what's, what's amazing about it is the interactivity of the flaps inside. So you open the book and everything feel like this is a ridge that is actually tactile. You can feel it. And there are all these flaps. And the thing that's nice about that is that because of the flaps, there's a lot of text, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. So if there are kids, they can read a lot of text on a single page, but it's not overwhelming because a lot of the text is behind these flaps. Some of the flaps are full pages. Um, so this one becomes, let me move this way, like a four page spread of the, of the solar system. Now I would suggest if you get this book that you go through yourself first and do the flaps because they are, um, if, if, if a kid did them first, they might tear them. I left this one sealed so you can see, kind of has little attachment points. So you'd want to do that and bend it back yourself first. Um, I just love that flap within a flap. So you can see there's just so many and it and it it is so amazing, like the core of the earth. Anyway, this is just amazing. If you have a, I just stopped saying amazing about this book. If you have a student or a child who likes space, and um, my, and likes good graphic design. This is wonderful. It goes all the way through space stations and how they work. So this is a paper cut book that I strongly recommend, Paper World Space. All right, the next book that I recommend is totally different, totally different. So this book is called Moose's Book Bus and it's written and illustrated by Inga Moore. And this book is uh, uh, is a sweet story about a moose who always reads to his family at night, but he runs out of books. And so he goes around and tries to borrow books from friends. Um, I'll just show you some of these delightful illustrations of anthropomorphized animals. So it's not just the moose that is anthropomorphized. All of the animals in this little animal community are also anthropomorphized and they all walk around on two legs um, and their best quality is they love to read. So what happens is he goes to the library and he and he checks out books. Um, he, he finds out that there's a library. And so then he starts reading and um, to his friends and neighbors until they crowd his, his living room so much that they can't even fit anymore. So then he ends up teaching them to read and his wife Mrs. Moose teaches other animals to read, and eventually everybody is able to read their own books and check books out of the library, except that they still like to hear him read. So they still come to his, his living room sometimes to hear him read his stories. 
And she dedicated the book, the author and illustrator dedicated the book to librarians everywhere. And it is such a sweet story about solving a problem where you like find you, you have a problem and how you find how you solve it and solve it in a way that is sweet and special. The illustrations are sweet. This to me is a, a nice book in the the um, kind of the genre. It, it had a little bit, the illustrations had a little bit of a feel of a Jan Brett story to me. So if you like that type of illustration, I think you'll like Moose's Book Bus. Also, if you're a book lover or a librarian lover, this is gonna be a great book for you. All right, next is a Christmas one. So I see teacher likes books. Thanks for joining in tonight. Um, the, um, I, I know I love that idea of a book chat with students. So hopefully, hopefully we'll see how that goes. So this one is one that I requested. So all of these books that I'm talking about, I requested from Candlewick. So I get a list of their catalog and I tell them the books I want. And so it's really no surprise that I like all of them because I picked them thinking that I would. So I always love a good Christmas story. I've got some favorites. In fact, I think I'll do an episode of this series just on like my favorite Christmas picture books, but I've got a Christmas one here. This is Twas the Night Before Christmas, same Clement Seymour text that we're all used to, the exact text that we know and love, no alterations there. What sets this one apart is the illustrations. The illustrations by PJ Lynch are absolutely my favorite of any version of this story. And there are a couple of reasons why. I think that the Santa is my favorite Santa of all. This, I hope it comes through clearly. Try not to get a glare. This Santa to me looks like he belongs on a Coke bottle. Like he is the quintessential Santa. But in addition to the Santa, it's the reindeer. The reindeer are absolutely stunning. Um, I found another page with the reindeer on. The reindeer are stunning. The other thing that's nice about this particular version of the story is that it doesn't have too much text on each page. My other version, I like the illustrations a lot. There's a lot of text on each page and I like this small amount. There's just a small amount of text. And so by the time the child is done looking at the images, and maybe even before you're out of text and, and ready to move on. So it moves through. The, the illustrations are somewhat dark, in, not in the sense of, um, not like esoteric darkness, but, but literal darkness. They're, they're quite dark, as you can see. And it gives that feeling of night, like twas the night before Christmas. It really has that feeling. So one thing I'll say when you're looking at Christmas books, and if you're, if you're looking for this one, be sure to follow the link in the description box on this YouTube side to take you to this exact one because it is hard to find the exact one. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of ordering a book and you don't get the version you wanted. So this particular version that PJ Lynch published by Candlewick is absolutely fabulous. Can't say enough about it. It, it kind of has a Polar Express feel to me, the way that it was done. I really like it. Oh, there's one other thing I just loved. I don't know if I can find it quickly, but there's this um, there's this illustration where Santa, here it is actually, Santa's going up the chimney and it's just the perspective with which the illustrator drew it that just, I loved it so much. These illustrations truly captured me, truly captured me. All right, the next book is, I've got how many more? I've got four more to share tonight. Um, the next book that really captured me was this one called We Are One, How the World Adds Up. And this book is really interesting because on the surface, it's about math. It goes through and it counts um, one. And there are these short little poems to a two page spread for each number, one through 10. And it's got beautiful illustrations. It's beautifully illustrated. But then below it, it has these really clever facts. And I think this is something that would really appeal to gifted kids. They love the trivia. They love the backstory. And while the simplicity of the poems in here might catch their attention briefly, I think it's this information at the bottom that is 
really going to be their favorite. So it's like one sandwich requires two slices of bread. And then it goes into the history of how sandwiches got their names. So it goes all the way through, all the way through one through 10. And then this is where it gets to be amazing. Near the end, it says, it says, it's got this little poem and it says, you needn't look far to see that it's true. The simple equation, and, and the idea of the simple equation is Aristotle's, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And that's the theory behind this book, that as people on a planet together, we're greater together than the sum of our parts. It's, it's so beautiful. So he says, um, the simple equation applies to you too. You are one person, but also one part of a family, a team, the world's beating heart. We're moon dust and starshine all circling the sun. We're a vast constellation. And yes, we are one. I just, I got goosebumps just reading that. I just love the message of this book that we are one. And I think just hopefully coming out of this pandemic, um, this message that, that we are one, that we're together, that we're all part of this on this planet together. And that, um, it, and it's a really nice look at early math concepts. So if you teach math, have math lovers, and also are interested in this, this beautiful idea, I strongly recommend We Are One. I've linked all of these books in the description box below, so you can check that out. All right, next, oh, I have been looking forward to this one, The Rock from the Sky by John Classen. Okay, this is classic Classen. If you like John Classen, if you like, I want my hat back. Um, he is, I, I wanna meet this guy because he's just so amazing. So, you know, his illustrations, hardly any text, super spare uh, illustration, the story, a little bit of irony, dry wit. Um, and it's so, um, it, it is so funny. And, and yet I feel like, I feel like Classen in general is a gateway drug to like Raul Dahl. Like younger kids handle Classen and then when they get older, they'll get Matilda and Charlie and the Chalga factory that are a little bit dark. So this is about an, um, an animal. And frankly, I don't even know what animal it is, um, but I think a turtle, it's like a stylized turtle. And he says, I like standing in this spot. It's my favorite spot to stand. I don't ever wanna stand anywhere else. And then we see, uh-oh, there's this big rock hurtling through the sky. And so what I love about this is that Klassen doesn't tell you this rock is hurtling through the sky to his favorite spot, but bright kids will figure that out. And it creates this sense of suspense and momentum. And then there's interaction with other characters as well. Um, the rock lands all over different places. There's in the center of it, there is a, a like futuristic dream sequence that's very well done. And the illustrations of this remind me of Maurice Sendall's Where the Wild Things Are, um, that, that same kind of, of feel. So this book is thicker. Um, if you can see here, it's a thicker book. Again, hardly any text on each page. It's still a quick read, um, probably a five minute read. Um, some of the pages have no text at all, just the illustrations of the classes. There we go. La la la. My spatial reasoning skills needing some work here. But um, so it's still a quick read, but it is a longer book. And this is his newest. I think this is um, it's it's clever. It's witty. It's classin. It's classic classin. So if you like John Classen, you're going to want the rock from the sky. All right, next. Oh, this was one I was really excited about. So this book is by Wynton Marsalis, the jazz musician, well-known, amazing, genius musician. And the thing I loved about this book, first of all, there were two things I loved about, three things I loved about this book. The three things I loved about this book, Squeak, Rumble, Womp, Womp, Womp is first of all, if you are an early elementary teacher or you, you know what? I'm not even gonna say early elementary. If you are, if you teach 
language arts and you teach the literary device of onomatopoeia, this is the book for you. Every single page has examples of onomatopoeia on it. Um, every single one. Every possible onomatopoeia that exists practically is in this book. So I really recommend it. Um, so that, that's one thing I like. If you teach onomatopoeia, this is a great choice for you to help you teach it. The second thing I like about it is that I think um, we're in a movement right now toward diverse books. And one of the things I think is most important is not necessarily just having books like the Watsons go to Birmingham, where we are focused on the idea that this is an African-American family and let's focus on the African-American experience. I think one of the things that's really important in, in having diverse books in classrooms and in homes is where it's just a normal part of life. We're not going to be drawing glaring attention to the fact that one family is white and one family is brown, right? Or one family is both white and brown. So I love the idea that we're going to just say, this is just humans. This is just humans. And so in here, there is a family um, and they are a brown family, but there are also musicians and other people who are Caucasian. Um, but I love that it's just people and that it normalizes the experience of the human experience. But in addition to that, the third thing I love about it is that it is a wonderful, um, a wonderful description of how music and sound surrounds us. And the illustrations are really interesting. They're somewhat stylized. Let me show you another picture. Um, they're somewhat stylized. Like here's a bunch of musicians. I found that the style, when I, when I first opened the book, I'll be honest, when I first opened it, well, I mean, not like I've been lying to you since now, but when I first opened this book, I wasn't thrilled with the illustrations. I was like, eh, not sure. But they grew on me. And now when I look at them, I'm like, oh, I love the illustrations. Why didn't I like them in the beginning? But I really do now. So highly recommend Squeak Bumble Womp Womp Womp. Or Squeak Rumble. Sorry, Squeak Rumble. All right. And the last book tonight is another pop-up book. So, well, the other one. The other one I mentioned early on isn't really a pop-up book. Let me pull it up again. Sorry, it gets dark when I lean forward. I'm not sure why. Um, the space one isn't really a pop-up book. It has flaps, but it's not truly a pop-up book. Um, this last one is a true pop-up book. So unusual to me. So unusual. One of the things I like about it. So this book is called Pop My First Pop-Up Mythical Mythological Monsters. I don't know that I agree with the my first pop up. I think this book could be interesting to even much older children. It is it looks like this on the side. It's it's not tall. It is quite thick. And what it has is 12 monsters. And for each monster, it has a little bit down in the bottom right. It says the name of the monster and a little bit about the monster. And then in the upper left, it says area of origin. And so if the monster is seen in lots of different cultures. It just says various. But if the monster is specific to a certain culture, then it says that. So like this one is from Scandinavia. What is really amazing here is the quality of the pop-up. I, I just don't know if a two-dimensional screen can do it justice. Maybe if I put it this way, you can kind of see that there's just multi-dimensionality in these monsters. And as I was looking through it, like this one from some are some are less um, intricate than others. Um, like the the unicorn is not that intricate, but others are astonishing in their intricacy. The colors are gorgeous. The saturation of the colors is gorgeous. And as I was reading through it, I mean, this one was scary. I had never heard of this monster. It's from Scandinavia. Scandinavia. If any of y'all are Scandinavian, they have some scary monsters. But the the thing that I was considering when reading this is how a child who had been introduced to this would understand so much illusion. Like they would get to Greek mythology and they would understand Medusa and they would understand, like if they saw Harry Potter, they'd understand Gryffindor because they'd see a griffin, right? So amazing. Um, the colors, again, were something that really appealed to me. This is Cyclops. And I love how this was done. This one is really, again, just 
the intricacy, you can see the layers in it, I think, there a little bit. So the intricacy of it. Again, there are um, 12 monsters. Oh, no, 15. 15 monsters in here. So this is Owen Davies, um, my first pop-up, Mythological Monsters. Highly recommend it. So, um, oh, Mark says Fenrir is in Magnum Chase, Magnus Chase. I, I, you know, I, you know, so I know Mark, he's one of my students. He is um, a very advanced reader and older, but he would like this. Like, that's the interesting thing about this book is that while you would think like on the back cover, it says ages three to seven. I, I think 15 year olds would like it. I know this 55 year old liked it. So I'm just going to go briefly through this list again. Again, check, if you want any of them, look in the description box below for the links to the specific ones or go to the Candlewick website. You know, I should put their link in the in the description as well. Go to the Candlewick website and, and you can find them there as well. So we had Owen Daly's My First Pop-Up Mythological Monsters. We had, you know what, I should like rate them. You know what, let me put them in order of how I would acquire them if I could only acquire some. Okay, I would, yeah, I see that. I'm like acknowledging a comment. Okay, this is the one I would have to have. I, I, would, I would have to have this book. This, this version with the PJ Lynch illustrations is my brand new favorite, um, Twas the Night Before Christmas. Next, I would want the um, Paper World Space, uh, truly one of the most unique, creative, cool nonfiction, love this book. Kids would love this book. Third, oh my gosh, this is so hard to do. Third would be We Are One, um, How the World Adds Up. Not just because I think it will really appeal to young mathematicians uh, and especially my little corner of the world in gifted land, but just that beautiful idea that we are all together. Next would be, oh man, 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 man. Probably The Rock from the Sky. Just because John Klassen, I mean, he's John Klassen. He can get a two-year-old to laugh. So I just love this. Um, next, Moose's Book Bus. I'm going to say I love this one because I'm just such a bibliophile and I love it. I think this is one of those children's books that the adults don't ever get tired of reading because it's got such a sweet message. And those of us who are spending a lot of time reading to kids tend to love books ourselves. And so anything that's promoting libraries and reading and bookish glory, we're going to love it. So just love this one. Um, oh, thank you for that comment, Nancy. She says, I recommend books for many levels. Oh, oh, just wait. This whole week, I got stacked. I wish you could see it. I have stacks piled up on the floor next to my desk. And one stack says, it said Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. And I got all these books. Um, next, I would have the Squeak Rumble Womp Womp Womp. And again, if you teach onomatopoeia, ah, uh, gotta have this book. This is a must have, must have. Um, oh, thank you, Connie. Thank you. And then I, I, I hate saying this is last. I mean, I loved all of these, um, but this would probably be in my order of like must haves. So just love this, just love this. So um, the pop-up mythological monsters. So I hope that you've enjoyed this. I'll be back tomorrow and tomorrow night I'll be earlier at 6 p.m. I'm trying to do them at different times through the week just to like fit everybody's schedule, but the recordings will be available. So if it's not a good time for you, you can watch the recording. And tomorrow I've got more titles and more fabulous titles. Every single one hits it out of the park. So if um, I, I hope to see you then and in the meantime, like, Go read.